Goodbye, friends. We'll see you soon. Send referrals. <laughs> that concludes. <laughs> now to our regular scheduled. Back, back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> yeah. A few episodes ago, Katie referenced listening to her Jay-Z Pandora station. My question is, Katie, will you share a link to that station with me? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hi, y'all. Welcome to Hustle Humbly. It's Alyssa and Katie, and we are two top producing realtors in the Baton Rouge market. We work for two different companies where we should be competitors, but we have chosen community over competition. The goal of our podcast is to encourage you to find your own way in business. So stop comparing yourself and start embracing your strengths. Hi, Alyssa. Hey, Katie. Guess what? What? It's episode number 114. Okay. It's another Q&A day. Oh, we still have that excerpt from episode 112. I'll have to see if I can find it still. Oh, yeah. We had recorded it when we were recording our first intro ever. Oh. And we said, oh, we'll have to save this for like <laughs> episode 112. I love that you remember the number because I'm still like, I don't remember that. Mm. Anyway. But it's in, in the original recordings? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And we oh. were like, we'll never get to 112. Well, now we're at 114. I wonder why I didn't remember it at you, 112. You don't say. <laughs> because you have baby brain. Yes. And baby brain is real. I do. Um, okay. So today is another Q&A, but first... Boop -a -doop -boop 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 do the flip report. The flip report. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should probably be going by more. <laughs> you mean you should be inspecting the progress more? You yeah. Have nothing to tell us because you're just letting them do it all. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm not a micromanager, and I'm a little too trusting. That's excellent. Well, being a not micromanager is excellent. That's probably one of your greatest strengths. It is, but it could also sometimes I'm like maybe I should pay a little bit more attention. Okay, you know? right. Um, but I, I did go by last week. Does he week. send you photos? No. Maybe try that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, you went by last week and what happened? The foyer cabinet, the big cabinet yes. when it's gone. Yeah. You can now see like the wood floors under it uh -huh. and they look really pretty. Okay. So the, but, and the <clears> floors <throat> Ran underneath that cabinet? They did. Thank I God. wasn't sure. Okay. Well, that was a win. So we're going to just be refinishing all the floors. Um, but whenever I flipped my house on, it was a rental that I renovated after the tenants moved out and sold it. We stripped those floors and then I picked a stain. Okay. I had no idea how to pick a stain. I was like, this looks like a good brown. Yeah. But then when he, I went by, thank goodness, and he had started and I was like, like, this is no good. No, it was like, when you see it on a floor. It's different because of the wood type. Yes. Yeah. So I said, I kind of like how it looks like the part that's not stained. Right. Like just regular. So what'd you do? Just poly it? Yes. Okay. And it looked amazing. Great. So that's just what we're going to do here. Okay. So we're just sanding, refinishing, mm -hmm. and giving it a nice refinish so that it will... Love it. Because it's kind of... It's a rich wood. Yeah, it is. It's got some good grains. Uh, yeah. What do you know? Is it oak? Do you know what it is? Yes, Pine? it's oak. It's oak. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. So I have, like, I just feel like I don't want to pick a stain. I would rather just say, let's just leave it. And it it kind of reminds me of just a natural look okay. without it being too... It's not orangey? No, it's not orangey. Well, then it should be fine. Yeah. We don't want orange floors. No. That's a that's a hard no. Right. Okay. What else is up? That's it? <coughs> Sorry about that. The AC has been replaced. Mm. I have I thought not... you were going to let them run it while they were working in there. Well, I was. I'm kind of... I am kind of sad it got replaced so quickly. They had an opening and they... They need so my contractor needed the AC company to come move the vents out the wall and oh. put them in the ceiling so he could proceed with the yeah. shower yeah. and the cabinets that would the vents were in the way. Got it. So we had to go ahead and Rude. get that started. So the AC has been replaced. I need to go by and check it out. I'm actually going today to look at it. Oh, okay. Um so when I went last time, they we I walked in the guest bathroom and there was a brand new bathtub in it. Oh. And it was so tiny. Oh, no. I didn't even know he was going to buy the bathtub. Oh. Um, well, what so, did you think was going to happen? I don't know. I guess I thought he would ask me before he bought it. <laughs> but I said, look, this isn't going to work. 
it, it might be like eight inches deep. It was a, oh ton, you know, God. just like a normal tiny tub. He was like, huh? I said, well, the, the problem is that it's the only it's tub. the only tub in the whole house. Right. So if you're a tub person, it won't this work. isn't going to work. So um, he was like, no problem. I should have called. I didn't think about it. He just making things happen. Yeah, he was just proceeding. Okay. So he's ripping it out. Oh, and I guess he can't return. He it. sent me a photo of a big tub, and I said, "Yes, that that's, that's great. better." Okay. I said, "Find the biggest tub that, that you will can fit, fit in the hole." Yes. Okay. So that's what he did. He went okay, back, good. and we that's been our only um, quote unquote issue, if you will. <laughs> that's not so bad. No. Wait, but you told us last time. I think there were some plumbing issues that were unforeseen. Oh yeah, we, we just had to replace. It, a were, few. They weren't costly. No. Okay. At all. Good. It was a very small amount. Oh. Okay. Great. Mm, I did decide because the master bathroom is smaller. Uh huh. We are actually going to put a barn door on the bathroom door. Okay. And instead of barn doors on the big case opening, I am going to find double doors to fit that space. I like it. I didn't love the idea of barn doors in that big case opening. No, it to takes begin up with. so much wall space. Yeah, and I just felt like it didn't feel secure. Like when right. you're in your Especially bedroom, with that being the back of the house, yep. and the in the entrance, the, the back doors are both very nearby. Yep. Yeah, I agree. You want to be able to like close and lock the door if you feel right the need. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and the sunroom ceiling, the old ceiling tiles mm-hmm. are gone. Oh, that's nice. It looks crazy. And you're putting beadboard up yes. there. Okay. Love it. Just giving it a nice sunroom vibe. Okay. Has anyone... Uh, here's my question. You're going to sell it when it's done, right? Yes. At what point do you put the sign out? Have you ever tried to sell... Like, you want to get all the selections done so no one's asking you for stuff. Yes. But, yes. Like, will you wait until it's all the way done and then... I don't know. Okay. I actually have one buyer in my head that Who might want I'm, it, I'm, but I don't know if the numbers will work for her. Okay. Um, I'm kind of wanting to see what my final numbers are you. to see mm-hmm. what I can offer because I think it would be perfect for her. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love it. So I, it's funny because I'm kind of I think about her a lot you're, when you're. But don't be making selections just for one person. I know. Yes, <laughs> but I feel like but she's maybe not I'll of, maybe I'll have someone in mind. But she's not one of a kind, so it might be the same type of person, right? Whether it's your right. yours or not. Okay, yes. well, I love that. Um, okay, well, here's a good question then: If you sell it to your own buyer, mm-hmm. I mean, it'll just be an off market. You're not going to get a commission out of. Oh, I'm not going to collect commission either. Well, either right. way, because it's my own well, right. property. Yeah. But if you had sold her a different house, you'd collect commission from working oh, with yes. her. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You you lose money on the sale. You would have. But made then, if her. I sell it to someone that has an agent, you're going to. I would have paid them side. commission. Fair. So okay, love it. All makes sense to me. The end. The end. Do, that do, concludes. Do, 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 do. Now <laughs> to our regular scheduled back back to our regularly <laughs> scheduled programming. Yes. Okay. Um, I would just like to set the scene before we start with these questions. I got smart this time, but I'll <laughs> call it semi-smart. Yesterday at five-ish p.m., I'm like, I'll just email everyone and ask for questions instead yes. of asking for them on Instagram, which would net some questions, but. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's sometimes not as many as I would like to because we want to sort through them. Yeah. Well, this worked great. Great. And for the record, if you guys are not on our email list, mm-hmm. you might want to jump on for future information and, and, and stuff. You can go if you've gotten the database, you're already on the email list. Mm-hmm. So if you've gone to hustlehumblypodcast.com slash database, gotten our template, you're on the list. That's where you get the free database. Yeah, that where you get it the free cost template. Anything. Exactly. Yeah. So if you want to get on the list, you can and get a copy of the database template, then that's what you do. Hustlehumblypodcast.com slash database. Yes. Okay. So anyway, I got a whole bunch of these questions, uh, so much so that I didn't have enough time to really sort through them this morning. Okay. So we're just going to kind of wing it, but it is the second day of fall here. Yeah. The weather is actually it very feels amazing. nice. It got into the 50s last night. You and I are having a nice glass of hot mm. vanilla macaron tea. Yes. I have on long sleeves. Mm-hmm. I have on my gym clothes because I took the dog for a walk. And so that's the vibe here. Sounds lovely. Got my messy bun. We're, you know, YouTube high. <laughs> um, so that's the story. Um, 
Are you ready to answer questions? Yeah. <laughs> and you know them and I don't know them at I all. I barely know them, but yes, you're right. Let's start with an easy one. Okay. With all the bad behavior slash shenanigans, mm -hmm. this is from Bonnie, we have, we have all had to deal with lately. Have you ever reported another agent to the state or to their managing broker? Mm. Bum, bum, bum. I haven't. Okay. But I have one that I feel like I should have. That's exactly how I feel. I have never gone to the state, like the LREC, no. our commission, mm -hmm. and reported someone. Me neither. Um, mostly because I think all of us just don't want to deal with the hassle that that entails. Like, yeah, making a complaint and you got to do the paperwork, and then you feel kind of bad. Like, mm -hmm. but if you're doing the wrong thing, you're doing the wrong thing. Yes. So I feel like I have, I should have, and I haven't. Now, as far as reaching out to a broker. I have on more than one occasion had to have my broker reach out to their broker. Okay. It's typically like they've gone AWOL, right? Like you right. can't find them or mm -hmm. they've done something so out of left field that it's like, I I can't handle this on my own. Or they're being, you know, resistant mm -hmm. or whatever the behavior is. You just have to get another party involved. Right. Which brings up the, a lot of times <laughs> the bad behavior comes from these um, broker owners so it's just that I know. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's just them. Yes. They are the agent and they're the broker. So there is no person over them for you to go to. You basically have to file a complaint. Right. And sometimes it just doesn't serve your client mm -hmm. to to mess with it. Like if they're trying to buy the house and they really still want the house and you're like, this is, you know, this should be maybe post closing you could report it. I was going to say, so my broker does not allow us to do any of that until after closing. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Get yeah. to the closing table, get yeah. the clients out of it, and then handle the realtor drama. That, I agree. And I, I'm sorry it has to be drama. Yeah. Because truly, you and I are not the, obviously, not the type of people who are just trying to report people no. to report people. Mm -mm. Okay. Thanks, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is from Paige, your friend at District South. Okay. Who came to the coffee. Yes, yes. Or lunch. Um, all right. Ready? I'm trying to be smart with my downtime during the holidays. Mm -hmm. I've kind of had to get a giggle out of this. Like, I'm like, who gets downtime during the holidays? Right. Do, like, maybe work downtime. Work downtime. Work downtime. Right. Okay. Social life downtime, not so not much. Not so much. It says, I would like to plan an email campaign for my database. I think twice a month would be the perfect amount of reaches. I'm trying to come up with content and I'm struggling. Mm. I would love examples of content to be used as an email campaign for past clients specifically. I think it's hard because neither of us really do this. <laughs> right? right? Um, I'll give you a suggestion, okay. Paige. Um, I don't know if twice a month would work for me, but if you want to do something a little bit more helpful for the holiday, like at the beginning or middle of Thanksgiving, you could always email your past clients a, this is what I'm thankful for this year. Thankful for you. Thankful for referrals. Thankful for your, you know, trust in me, your business, whatever. Just a quick thank you. That's a good mm -hmm. go. And then maybe a couple of weeks later, still beginning of December, you do. Here's some of my favorite gifts I found this year. That's a good idea. Like something useful for the season for your, you know, and it could even be things that you found like great housewarming gifts or right. something that plays into real estate and is a reminder that you're an agent, but also might be helpful for them or like how to buy for your difficult aunt or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So then you could do that. Do I think what one? she's saying too makes sense because the reason a lot of those aren't really successful is because people are forcing the content. Right. Like if you don't have anything helpful or useful to say, no, you don't Please need to say don't. anything. Do <laughs> Please don't say anything at all. How about like um, holiday events? Like mm -hmm. here's where Santa breakfast is or mm -hmm. here's where, you know, if you want to do some local events or local shop or feature local shops mm -hmm. or do something like that. Or you could even do a... You know, I know Chelsea and her group has done a 12 days of Christmas giveaway thing like through social media, but you could also do that via email to mm -hmm. your past clients. Like today is free coffee on me. Here's the you know scan code for the Starbucks or the local coffee shop. Right. Go do. That's actually one that I have done and really worked well. I sorted my past yep, clients. Yeah, we did that last year. Love that. Sorted my past clients into the group that says past clients in my Facebook. And then I posted a Starbucks gift card, $100 on it. Go get yourself a coffee. And I did it, I think, on Black Friday. When people yep, are out yep. and shopping and doing whatever. And so post the thing. When it's gone, it's gone. Quite honestly, y'all, I 
people have used it a ton and it's never been gone. Wow. I've never like had someone say, oh, it was gone. I've even right, had people right. at like three in the afternoon be like, hey, is it still there? I'm going to Target. <laughs> I want to grab a coffee. And I would look it up and be like, yeah, go for it. That's fun. So that's a fun one. And then I think the most important one you can do for your business is maybe the week after Christmas, your email is, here's your current value. Here's mm -hmm. your current property value. Do you think 2022 is the year you want to refi or move or whatever? Or just, hey, here's your value. It's good to know. I think a seller report is good, like on their neighborhood, once yeah. a month, all the active pending yes. solds in their neighborhood, what the day on market is. That's useful and everybody likes to know what's going on. Yep. Um, also, I've mentioned before, like reaching out to your vendors and yeah. saying, hey, guys, um, my power washer is doing $15 off. Oh, if I like you that. Wanna, Contact him. Just mention that Alyssa said that you're, mm -hmm. you wanted the special. Yep. Um, and, and just reaching out to any other vendors, too, that you have that might want to participate. As long as it adds value, I don't have an issue with it. It's right. the ones that are – the company – like when you hire a company that sends out a newsletter for you mm -hmm. and it's not – from you, it's not oh. written by you, it's not. I'm not afraid to say those are garbage. Yeah, they're just garbage, right? I and look, y'all, I let my Remax website send the monthly newsletter. They were, I mean, it's it wasn't offensive in any way, it's just like, whoa, it's time to clean your windows, or this mm -hmm. is how you clean up for the fall, or right, here's what, a good recipe. Fine, fine, it was fine, and I liked that my clients. We're getting an email mm -hmm. from me once a month just to remind. And I have had a couple of people here and there respond back and be like, oh, hey, I need you to do never. Oh, I like this content. Right, right. It is way more impactful even if you did it every other month and did something that is specific to you mm -hmm. and says, hey, it's Katie. You know, my kid just learned to ride his bike. We enjoy the fall weather. This is the park we went to. Mm -hmm. Hope y'all are well. Yes. Great. The end. Wonderful. Right. Here's a tip on teaching your kid to ride his bike. Go over to Highland Road Park. Yep. It's a flat, mm -hmm. wide sidewalk. If you run off the road, it's grass. Mm -hmm. That's where he learned to ride his bike. Great. The end. Interesting. Helpful. I do Tough. like what you said about how every other – if if it's once a month or every other month, it's better if it is less frequent, Quality if it's actually over good. Quantity. Yes, good content. For sure. And I, I was trying to dig through. I believe <laughs> – there was one, and I can't find it now. It was basically, how, tell me, like, and we'll get back to it. But it was like, how much is harassing? Mm -hmm. We'll come back to that. Put a pin in it. Okay. Ano here's an anonymous question. Oh. I did ask if they would like their names to be shared on the podcast. They said no. This one said no. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you. You'll know once you read it. How do you deal with agents who are combative from the very start? Mm -hmm. The ones that question everything and think you and your client are lying mm -hmm. and that everything needs to go their way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> LOL. How do you muster the strength to deal sometimes without losing your mind? Especially in a market where we have a lot of new agents who are not trained well, these are not my words. So many new, so many new cloud brokerages who have 500 agents. Y'all are the best. Thank you, ladies. It has been trying. Can you tell? That's oh what she gosh. said. <laughs> um, I always try to, when I know off the top, like that, it, this is going to be difficult. Yeah. Keeping it extra professional, professional. on my end, yeah. going above and beyond yeah. to be extra professional trying to keep everything in writing mm -hmm. um, via email. Yeah. Maybe that means not answering when they call. Uh, um, right. Yeah, you don't have to answer when they call. No, let them cool down. Let them cool down. Especially give them Especially if space. you just sent like a repair request and they're immediately calling you, like give it a minute. Right, <laughs> right. Respond. Just let it, you know, you don't have to answer every time they call. But yeah, that's what I do. I just try to really detach myself emotionally yeah. and not take it personally. And I know. Be super nice. Yes. Be super professional. Yes. Do and here's the other thing. I think the problem is it's hard to have the patience for this if you also aren't having a day off, if you're working 24-7. Like, you build up strength to deal with this when yeah. you're not run ragged, right? Yep. There's an agent in our market that I'm doing a deal with right now. Your face is priceless for the record. That <laughs> has been challenging. Okay. But I feel she does a decent amount of business. And I feel like I need to, I've never, I don't think I've ever met her in person, but okay. we've done transactions together. We email. They're just, I feel like when it's over, I need to like go to lunch with her. Okay. 
I know that's weird. You you want to grow the relationship. I want to be like, who are you? I need to know more. Tell me more. Maybe it would be fine if we just met and had lunch. Maybe the Look, defenses the, would be down the and for the next transaction. No, fine, maybe, no, no. I think that's fine. Go for it. I think the problem is sometimes um, the agents we're dealing with on the other side and other humans in, in the world and life, they're dealing with something you don't know. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. some reason why they're really stressed or really snappy or mm-hmm. whatever the yucky behavior is. I hope. I hope that's just not who they are. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes just for me, I'm like, I'm just walking away from this. There's a few agents in our market. One in particular, she's pretty tough. And people are like, oh, my gosh. But it's funny because I have met her several times. So you know and we just have this friendship. I need to know more. And it's weird, but I kind of like that. I'm like, oh no. That you crack the code. Yes. Love it. Yes. Kind of like getting, take the challenging agent right. and see Try what and you crack can do. The code. Yeah. Crack the code. See I if they it. can grab lunch yeah. or something. Can you, can you, right. Send I think it's gift. more Send important if they are the difficult agent that does a lot of volume. Yeah. Because you're going to cross paths with again, them again. Again, You know. If it's the difficult, what about if it's the difficult new agent who who doesn't really know what they're doing and they're like, do you think that's a defense mechanism? I don't know. Like maybe they're feeling like they don't have a lot of experience. I, I definitely negotiated with some people that I'm like, why? Yes. Why are you being so you're mean? so upset. Yeah. Like what, what's, there's no reason for any of that. We have mm-hmm. lots of episodes on this. Mm-hmm. Emotional boundaries is probably a good one. Yes. Okay. Do you feel like we've we've got that yeah. covered? Okay. Um, I'm I'm putting a pin in the next question. It was about negotiating. <laughs> we have done a whole episode on this, and I think we get pretty in depth. Yes. But um, Katie did want us to faux negotiate against one another. What? Here, I'll read it to you. <laughs> I would also love to hear you both try to negotiate against one another on a fake property. She said she tuned into a training with this structure and it was crazy powerful. Oh. They stopped and analyzed each turn in the negotiations and what they could do differently. Um, so she said maybe you could record and then comment on your techniques. I do want to make a comment about this. Okay. I think that would be sinfully boring <laughs> for, for us. us. Yes, yes. I don't think it would be powerful. No, because, I don't. because I'm not like quick witted on my feet. Like no. I'm going to zing you and like, right, like right. a lawyer doing a negotiation. We would both be like, how can our clients win? Yeah. How can we make this happen? What do you need to do to make this work? <laughs> I'm like, it would, you can choose the closing date. What, what tell would you me, like? Tell me more about what you need. <laughs> how can I help you? <laughs> it would be so ridiculous. It would be. But it kind of made me laugh to think, People do have negotiating styles. Yes. Our, I think both of our styles is pretty similar in that I just want my client to get the house mm-hmm. or sell the house. And I'm just trying to get there. And I don't actually care if the other party is mean to me. Right. I just don't want my client to know that. Right. Because the process isn't supposed to be emotionally draining for them. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be the filter. I'm like, being a filter on one right now. Pretty seriously. The buyers are not... It's my sellers. The buyers are not being nice at all. My sellers have no, no clue. idea. No clue. No idea. Yeah. So I think that's your that's your purpose. That's right. how we both negotiate. To shield those like, things. Shield them. Now, sometimes, well, I'm not going to get into it, but sometimes you just have to tell your what's client going what's going on because there's no logical explanation. Right. And so then I have to be like, look, they're just being difficult. This is what's going on. Mm-hmm. But I try not to. Mm-hmm. Um, but for negotiations, yeah, uh, you know. I think talking to someone on the phone, though, Mm -hmm. is probably something both of us do. Yes, during that time. Call the agent before the offer. Mm -hmm. Call the agent after the offer. Call the agent during the inspection. Like, it's just easier Mm -hmm. to figure out, like, what's going on on the other end. And then when they hear your voice, they understand that you're you're not not being combative. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Okay, here's one on the current market craziness. Okay. Also from Katie, in this current market, what are you doing to get buyers under agreement or get top dollar for your sellers? Are you asking for best and final to start? Are you going back to everyone who offered? Are you accepting escalation clauses, which are common where she is? Um, What things have you seen in the market? All of those things. Yeah. Okay. I would like to say... um, no, I have not asked for best and final to start. Because no, me some, neither. For some yeah. reason, I feel like that is terrible juju. Mm-hmm. And further, 
it it off puts some buyers. Our market is not 50 offers on a property. No. Maybe it's four to 10 on a really good one, right? Yeah. And if you say on a property that might have only got two offers, best and final to start, you might get zero offers. Mm -hmm. Like, I do think it can scare away. We still have the type of buyers locally that can be scared away. Yes. I mean, I had one this, the pat, the last listing I took a couple weeks ago did get one offer and three other of the showings said they were going to make an offer. And when they heard we had an offer, they did not. They said, don't worry about it. And I, it was not a good offer that we got. Like oh. I had to counter and negotiate. It wasn't like I'm going to need over list price. Right. But they didn't want to get involved. Oh. So I think the more business you do and the more you talk to agents in your own market, you will get a feel for how this is going, mm -hmm. right? And it's constantly shifting. You can't get too comfortable with what the process is. So yeah, maybe asking for highest and best made sense a month ago, but maybe now it doesn't. And there are a lot of agents that are new that have never experienced a market where a listing doesn't sell on day one in multiple mm -hmm. offers. So things are going to change and they could then go back to that. You just never know. Hello friends. We are so excited that so many of you are using the template course and the reviews are just pouring in, letting us know that it has helped your business as much as it has helped our business. Yes, listen to this review. Thank you so much for providing this wealth of information, knowledge, and template form. So far, I've used a handful and received positive feedback like, this is so professional, or I really appreciate how organized you are. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, Your clients are actually there. gonna say that. Yes. All right, here's another one. Thank you so much for this. I can't tell you how many times I've started this and how many notebooks of samples and notes I had. <laughs> I have ADHD and it is super hard to stay focused on getting it done. Having it all in one place is gonna make it so nice. That is what we're here for. No, just look, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just yeah. use these. Yeah, nice and simple, easy, ready to go, ready for you to put your own logo on, make it sound like you. So head over to hustlehumblypodcast.com slash course slash course and check it out that's right and you're going to enjoy them you're going to love them you're going to change your life literally fired <laughs> my assistant they are the best hey, enjoy friends. the template yes enjoy as a listing agent i am communicating with all showing agents uh -huh. so hey we have one offer it has a response time of 4 p.m every time um and then if we get another offer letting the first offer i do like to let the first offer know hey we do have another for offer. sure um so i guess i and think that's common I do, courtesy yes and it's better for your seller right you gotta leverage the first offer to get mm -hmm. better offers or more out of them right um, and then as a buyer's agent, this year I have definitely used more escalation clauses yeah. than I ever have. Yeah. I, I would say this year I probably used six or seven. Yeah. I mean, that's a... That's a lot. That's a lot. When that's I've never lot. used them before. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I mean, sometimes you just don't know what to do. Appraisal gap. Have you done a lot of those? Uh, yes. And I feel like we're splitting them, some of them. Some but of them, as my buyer, buyers are eating the whole thing. Mm, I know. It's just rough. It's hard. As a buyer's agent, is that something you suggest to your buyer when they're writing the offer? What? Well, I have uh, not to, written to, any to offers about offering where you're to cover covering the appraisal. Gap. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I had something else. I had I had a recent one um, on a listing where they, multiple offers, four, I think. I might have told the story. And then one of them went way over list. And I'm like, no way in the world in this cookie cutter neighborhood is this appraisal going to come back. Mm -hmm. And they were covering an appraisal gap of $5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, great. Because I don't think it's going to appraise for this, but it's 5000 over appraisal is right. So that's serious. That's yeah. a, for a $200,000 house, that's a lot of money. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, great. Well, we're, we're leaning towards you. There were other good offers, but we'll, we'll go with this one. Like literally the day that she's going to sign the counter offer, she's like, mm, actually, she, no, she can only do 2,500 over. And I'm like, okay, two days before closing? I'm sorry, she can't actually cover that appraisal gap. Isn't that default? Totally. But my sellers, are hand, their hands are tied. Do we start over again? It's a day before closing. They, See, that should be reported. Yeah, maybe that's what I need to report. Yeah, that's... Uh, she could blame it on her buyers. I think but, that's what she was doing. But as the agent, it's your job to well, communicate it, that with your clients. Right. And all and I so, don't think they understood. 
I think they understood and they just did what the buyer just said whatever she needed to say to get the house. Right. Which I just is wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's current market craziness. Yes. Anything else? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, here's an anonymous question. How do you generate consistent leads, either as a new agent or when restarting your business? We get this question a lot. I feel like the consistency comes with time. Okay. You have to work less for your quote unquote leads. Right. Um, like I feel like I have, even the last two weeks, the amount of people reaching out, hey, my brother needs to buy or uh -huh. hey, so-and-so needs to sell yeah. or hey, can you help me with this? And um, it just, it do, it is something that naturally happens when you're on the over train, time. Yeah. You get on the train. But then I think it's just about showing up. Yep. Showing up um, on in social media, commenting mm -hmm. on their posts, being there for them, sending out emails. I think being in a work frame of mind is also key. Go to your office. Mm -hmm. Be around other people who are in the middle of transactions. <laughs> Offer to work for free. If mm -hmm. you're new or restarting your business, it's about spending your time in a real estate frame of mind. Mm -hmm. How do you get there? Go do open houses for someone. Go to an agent tour. Well, this is very much what to do when you're new or slow. Yes. All of those things still. And when you have a transaction, you better make it the best transaction in the whole wide world so that that client will refer you to someone else or use you again. I think that's an important point because so many agents have one or two deals going and they're, I want more, I want more. But if you're not then they're neglecting what they have trying because to they're trying generate. to get more. Yes. Yeah. Remember how many leads you need. Right. It's a whole lot. <laughs> right. When Don't you drop the ball on what you're working. Someone right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what happens the most. I, I totally agree. But if you handle each transaction with excellence, it will just naturally lead to mm -hmm. referrals. Agree. Have you ever had to fire a client from Stacy? Have you ever fired a client? Mm. I feel like I have one time. Okay. Why can't I remember? Because you blocked them out of your mind, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've ever fired. We've definitely talked about this before. I don't know that I've ever fired a client like said, this isn't working out. Mm -hmm. We're not going to work together anymore. I have definitely let someone sort of slip away. Yes. And not pursued yes. them because they were not nice or it wasn't working or I didn't want to work. I'm trying to be, here's the problem. I would like to be better about referring out the business that I don't want or that's, but I also don't, who would you send that to? Your worst enemy? <laughs> like, I don't, it's not working. Why? Do, I, sometimes you just got to let these things go. Yes. Sometimes you let it go. There are definitely people I have closed that I did not put in the database. Oh, same. Because I don't care to. Mm hmm Maintain communication with you. And when you go to sell this house, it's okay if you want to use another agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please, please don't call me. Please again. don't call me. But I, then they always do. They, right. And I'm like, I thought you hated me. Right. And they're like, no, you did a great no, job. You're wonderful. And, and then they suck you back in and you're like, wait, you're still not. You tricked me. You're still not nice. Right. You're still not nice. Oh, I did. I had an investor oh, one good. time. Oh, good. wait. Gosh, she was terrible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just the meanest lady you ever met. Oh no. And, um, after I sold her home, she wanted to flip another one. And I just said, this is, I don't think work. we worked well together. Good for you. What did she say? She didn't really say much. Right. She just kind of went, Oh, well, Oh, uh, like she didn't really say much. And I said, like, best of luck. Good luck to you. Yes. That's the other thing. Just make a final statement. Don't continue the conversation. Mm -hmm. If you're firing a client, you're going to have to be like, it's like you're hanging up. Like, there is no, no gray area. And like, if they respond, actually, just ignore. Actually, we did not work well together. The end. Yes. No more responses. Um, here you go. James said, a few episodes ago, Katie referenced <laughs> listening to her Jay-Z Pandora station. My question is, Katie, will you share a link to that station with me? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is hilarious. Happy to, James. Meanwhile, I just think this question is cracking me up. I, I, YouTube can see I brought my mug, my regulator's mug. And totally coincidentally, underneath my sweater, I have my, can you read it? But first, gangster rap. Yep, that's my t-shirt. We're so different. <laughs> Maybe in our music, but not in life. Right. <laughs> so yeah, James, I'll I'll hit you up with that Pandora station. It's quite good. I have thumbsed up all the best songs. I'm over here jamming out to my country music and my oldies rock and my 
<sighs> Beatles and I don't mind. Well, the Bob Beatles Dylan. Are, I mean, and... it's fine, but that's not my jam. <laughs> I really love my nine, 1990s music. I yeah. Mean, that's when I was in high school, like <laughs> in college. I really like my rap. I really like my like Dave Matthews. And so you can only I love Dave Matthews. Yes, I love yeah. all them. Oh, so, so you good. can just like listen to rap like. Yeah. yeah. Oh. While I'm working. Yeah. Or in the shower. Okay. <laughs> or drive it for sure driving. Okay. On a beautiful day like this, all your windows are down. You gotta crank up. It's so funny because then I turn in my neighborhood, I'm like, I guess I should turn this down. Right. <laughs> I mean, woof. Okay. Um Mandy would like for us to close our cover our post closing routine. Gift, correspondence, etc. Basically, how do you close your file? Let me pull up my Trello for you real please, quick and look at my checklist. Please do. While you're doing that, I'll tell you I send a one-week post email that requests the review. If they did not write a review for me at closing, which is on my like last sheet I give them to fill out. Right. If they didn't do it, then I'll send the email with the link. And I will tell you this, friends. If you, like me, have ever fussed about the Z word, stop asking your clients to put the review in that database. What is the point? Google has a very nice Google My Business and you put the review on Google. Mm -hmm. Guess what'll pop up before all your Z word reviews? Mm -hmm. Your Google reviews. Wow. So that's where I've been putting them this year. I stopped. I do give the link. I'm like, if you are a user of the Z word, please, you can leave your, you can copy and paste it from, but I tell them, ultimately, I would like you to do a Google review. Okay. If you decide to do one and you also want to post it to my Facebook or to Zillow, here are the links. Right. So they have the links. I'm giving them more than one link in that email. That email is crucial. If you forget to do this email, you have basically lost the ability to get that follow up with the client at all. Right. And I typically send my thank you note right after closing, unless I know they won't be at the address yet. Mm -hmm. So they've gotten a thank you note from me before I am requesting the review. Gotcha. Okay. So they got a gift at the closing. Y'all know I don't always give sellers gifts. Buyers all get a gift. Some sellers get a gift. It just depends on the situation. Um, and then they get a thank you note and then they get the email and then I do all my recording as the follow-up like within my records like I put them on all my spreadsheets and that way I know what's what and yeah that's sort of my whole thing okay this is my Trello closeout checklist let's hear it mail buyer's agent a thank you card uh -huh. but I have learned because so many people are in the cloud they don't have an office <laughs> So it. So what do you send them? A thank you it email? It just comes or back. Just, yeah, just a thank you. Yeah, you I guess know. what? You can't have a card. Right. Right. Look for it in the cloud. Mail a thank you card to the client after closing. Fair. Yes. I like it to show up in the mail. Me too. Like a week or two. Oh, for sure. It doesn't have to be like the day of closing I'm writing it. Like it could no. be a week later. Hey, okay. just wanted to I say thank like you again. I kind of like when there's some separation. Yes, me too. Okay. Um, if there was a referrer, I send them a thank you card for sure. and or gift card, Starbucks I or whatever I usually Starbucks it is. for mm -hmm. sure. I delete the MLS search that was set up for that client. I do that as well. Send recommend – oh, send the email asking for referrals. Got it. And then also reminding them – that email has reminding them about homestead. It's reminders. Utilities, mail. Yeah. Um, you send that one right away? That one goes pretty quickly. Okay. Um, and then I input them in my spreadsheet. Um, my database. database. Yep. Yes. And then I add them to receive monthly updates on their new subdivision. And that's just from your office. Yes. Office software. Mm -hmm. I like that. I don't currently do that because I'm not... I used to have that ability, but I don't at the new office. But I'm sure there are third parties that can do that. Or you can start doing a monthly newsletter and put them on that list. Yeah. You can do that. They just mail need to be whatever, whatever list you have. That's yeah. where they need to be. And, make, and then I need to add, make sure your friends on social media. Oh, I have that in mind. Yeah. Okay, great. That's it. Mm -hmm. The end. Goodbye, friends. We'll see you soon. Send referrals. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Kelly said, what are some client appreciation events that you have done or wanted to do? Also, she is the co-owner of the brokerage and helps plan events for the agents. Is there an event idea that your brokerages have put on that is not boring <laughs> or ideas you like to see your office host? Um, always looking for more creative ideas and feel free to mention OKS. 
Two Ke- things. Oh, real Kelly's quick. in Idaho for the record. Okay. I know you like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you know I don't like client events because right. nobody knows anybody it's except awkward. you. Right. It's all I just don't care for them. Okay. Um, I also don't know that it's the best use of time and money for your business. Okay. When you could be using your time elsewhere. Sure. For client events. Well, it's hard to deepen a relationship in that environment. Yes. But I do think there's way is there's ways it can work. I like the pie thing. I was about to say I have done the pie thing. Yes, which is a really a three to six week process if you do it correctly because you send a paper invitation here or you can do this via email. But he, this is the day; it's the Tuesday typically before Thanksgiving because then the pie is still good for Thanksgiving if they want it for that. Um, here is the invitation. You'll come to my office between, it's like an open house style, between 2 and 6 p.m. Come if you to would the like office, a free pie, free pie, what flavor? And you have to pick the flavor. That's basically how you get the RSVP. Yes. You can't just say there'll be pumpkin pie. Right. Because then you have no clue how many pies to get. Right. And the odds are you're going to end up with way too many pumpkin pies to yes. take home. And there's only so many pumpkin pies anyone can eat because I'm not eating any of those. No. Mm-mm. No, thank you. I don't like pie at all. <laughs> Ironically, Neither do I. Oh. I like I gave away apple pie, pumpkin pie, and pecan pie, which is a big thing locally. Yes. And I don't eat any, any of, of that. Me apple I could maybe do, but yeah. I'm like, no thanks. I don't like a mushy, warm apple. No. I kind of like an icebox pie or a key lime pie. Yeah, that's I could do better. That stuff. Yeah. Anyway, this is not a pie show. The point is, you have to pick. That's the way you know who's coming. They come during the open house window. You take photos with them. It was fun. So they come to you they and they get, your, you. get their you, pie. You can, here, here, Alyssa, good news. You can sit there with your computer and work for four hours. While They'll they pop can get in their and pie. out. It's great. They're not there long. You say, hey, how are you? Here's the pie. Bye-bye. The end. I love that one. I did like that. That one's fine. Um, one of the agents in our office got her photographer uh-huh. and did like Easter bunny pictures. Okay. Love that. Because that was cute. useful for it your clients. Useful. Or like a Sa- I've seen Santa photos before. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something like that makes sense to me. Also, my office, it wasn't a client event, but we used to call the local um, – frozen yogurt food truck Mm -hmm. and have them come sit in the office and we would just go out and I mean we would actually buy our own yogurts but what if you said I got a snowball car or a pizza truck or whoever it'll be at the office see I love that kind of stuff from two to five or 12 to one if you want to have lunch it's on me today come on by then you hang out and talk to people when they come get their free whenever our broker is out of town Mm -hmm. she is like we'll get an email that says Pizza in the kitchen at 11 o'clock. Love it. Or um, we do Fall Fest in our office, mm-hmm. which is our big event every year yeah. where we dress, dress up, up okay. and people do skits. And it's like this big ordeal. Skits. That's amazing. Yes. People go all out for Fall Fest. Wow. And so it's actually coming up. So we're really excited about oh, it. Oh, that's but so fun. I love a good Christmas party. Yeah. You know, I just... I think the office stuff is fun. I, it's the client stuff that I'm more picky Here's about. Here's something I've wanted to do and did not do, but I think would be great. Locally, they have like a, um, a succulent shop where they do like a class of 10 to 15 and mm-hmm. you make up a little, basically a plant, right? You create your own oh, potted yeah. plant or whatever. Or you can go to these places and learn how to make a charcuterie or yes. like a cooking class. Mm-hmm. Those are great. You did the macaroons. I sure did. I mean, it wasn't with clients, but it was with like other, Mm. you know, adults. Um, There are lots of those types of things that I think can be really impactful if you wanted to be like, I'm hiring, you know, a chef and they're going to come teach us how to make fresh pasta. I'm taking 15, you know, people from my database can come. So let me know if you're interested. Yeah. Whatever. I've had, um, I did the class at the board that was on occupied staging. And when I posted it in my stories, I had some of my clients and friends, people in my database say, oh, that was really cool. I would love to hear that information. I'm like, if I did a class on staging, would y'all come? And they were like, yeah. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's smart. I thought yeah. about doing like a bookshelf styling class, like partner up with a local decor store or something mm-hmm. like that. There are a ton of ways you could take this. Yes. But I do think intimate gatherings or open house style are really the best. And and having something for them to do. Like yeah. if you hosted right. a charcuterie class, yeah. at least even if I don't know you, right. we're doing something, Together. we're busy, yeah. we're not, it's not awkwardly awkward. just... Agree. 
let's go to the photo booth. And yeah, let's... I think that if you have something for your clients that they need or want to do, like a Santa photo mm-hmm. or an Easter bunny photo or headshots or just any helpful value, Give value, yeah. value. I agree. Okay. Anything else? Mm-mm. All right. Um, let us see here. Pam mm-hmm. just discovered the podcast. Great. And shared the episode on doing comps with her entire office. Wow. Wow, I know. They had a lively discussion. Great. At our Tuesday sales meeting. Okay, here's my question. I recently completed a CE class on diversity. That's continuing education for our lay listeners. Mm -hmm. Um, We were taught never to discuss, in quotes, finding the right buyer, instead directed to find the right offer. Would love to hear your thoughts on the always challenging navigation of the fair housing laws. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I can see in your face that you do not want to tackle this. But I will say when I read that, I thought that is very interesting because I can't say that I've never said that term, but it made perfect sense to me Mm because even if I said that term, I don't discern between any of the protected classes when I say find the right buyer I mean find the person that needs your house right like I don't like that not, could be anybody I don't care who it is that could be anybody. I literally couldn't care less it could be any human with money mm-hmm. all I care is that you have cash money right or a loan are you approved to buy this are you, house can you buy this house do you like this house that, that is it great you're the, the buyer you're you're the right buyer it's but, like I just I get so frustrated like we can't talk about people I know look I don't like, I, I'm very mindful of the words I use, especially yes. on the podcast, because I would never want to make anyone feel like they weren't included or they weren't welcome. I almost feel like it's rude to think of them as offers. <laughs> right. I like, feel like it's These better. are real people. Right. These are real people. Are I feel like people. we need the right buyer. Who's we the right the, buyer for your home? The right. Like, who's the right offer? Offer does sound to me, very though, businessy. It does. I don't I like it. Who's, but who's I, got the right offer? It makes me sad that that's how careful we have to be. I, look, I just... I grew up in a different time. We all did. Things change. I think it's okay that things change. I think that I'm not wanting to be resistant for the sake of being resistant. If it does hurt other people's feelings for me to say, find the right buyer. Right. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. <laughs> I certainly don't want anyone to feel like I'm, you know, trying. I don't care. Right. Literally right. don't care. Right. But if I, you know me, you know there is no ill couldn't intent care, there. Couldn't care less. But- I do think fair housing is important. It is very important. I think that at some point, maybe we'll get an expert or someone to come talk about it because I don't want to tackle it Mm -hmm. um, just because I want to do it a proper service. Sure. But I think that we should all be mindful of fair housing. Absolutely. It's. I think it's going to become more and more highlighted as we progress. I think it's just going to be something that you really need to take continuing education on. Yes. be up to date with you what terms are appropriate. Have, you need to have scripts for your sellers. Yes. And probably your buyers, but more often your sellers. They are subject to fair housing laws as well. Right. They're not exempt. I'm not the one who has to do it all right. And they can just, you know. Mm-hmm. So buyer love letters came up yep. in a recent continuing education class I took. And um, y'all... It makes sense because if you have one family that wrote, oh, we just want to raise our family here and have we kids. Lo- it can be, we love it the can house. be this silly. We love the color blue and your house is blue. Right. I mean, yes. But then the single person trying to put in an offer writes a letter that says, I'm a single person and I love your house and I can't wait to make, make this- the whole thing a home gym. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But then they're like, oh, well, you chose them based on the familial status. Right. You know, so it's, no. it's all these things. They're right like, now. if you write a letter, make sure that it's very, I'm like, just don't write the letter. Right. Write the best offer. Right. How about that? In, in one of the agent groups, it said, how are y'all winning in this market right now? How are you getting your buyers to win? And someone wrote, Write the be best, the best offer. Write the best offer. It's the actually end. that black and white. The end. Make the terms the best you can. I'm sorry if for whatever reason your client can't put down a large down payment or can't, mm-hmm. you know, like I get it, but you just do the best you can with right. that buyer. That's all you can do. We don't need a fancy letter. Let's do one more. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure for me to pick one more. We're, we're going to have to make a part two. Hmm. No, Alyssa, I don't know. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Kathy. 
I have learned so much from the podcast. You have talked before about following up to the point of being annoying. Do you have a good rule of thumb that when you have a lead slash referral, how often do you try to stay top of mind and for how long, especially if they aren't very responsive? It's different per client. I think you have to gauge the situation. What is their time frame? Are they in a lease? Why are they dragging this out? You have to understand the person yeah, to understand how to adjust your follow-up accordingly. And maybe also you have to understand the method. If it's a referral, especially, who gave you the referral? Were mm-hmm. they really looking? Like, how motivated mm-hmm. was the person that has been referred to you? So mm-hmm. I think you have to just be... Um, aware of where they're at. And also people could start talking about buying and selling real estate six months to two years in advance. Yes. And you do not, please don't call them once a week for two years. That is, that is annoying. But that's where I think Trello becomes so important because you need to have them written down somewhere. For sure. So that once a month or every now and then you are looking at the pipeline right. of who needs okay. to follow up. Yes. Who does need to be followed I think up you with would be and surprised how. surprised how often, especially if you're new, you'll learn this over time, how often people just put the whole process on hold mm-hmm. for any number of reasons for mm-hmm. months on end, maybe years. And then you, they come back and are like, okay, now I'm ready. Sure. So most people who move, it is sort of a fluid situation in timing. It mm-hmm. does, unless you're relocating out of state or into it's like, well, we we do really want the house, but we can squeeze into this one for a bit longer. Sure. Or, you know, the, my mom got sick. I have to take care of her own time to move. Or mm-hmm. it, It's an elective thing. You don't have to move most of the time. And I usually make notes, too. Like, I had a lady that was very gung-ho, and then she changed her mind and decided to wait till she was going to retire in two years. And so I made that note. Yeah. And it's just, you have to figure out what is their holdup so that you can adjust accordingly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that's the, the most important part of now, that. Now, like the quote unquote cold leads. Oh, we did I'm talk not, all about that. Right. I'm not as worried about bothering them. Like you came through my website. Right. I'm going to talk to you. I'm as going much as to I check to. in with you until I decide, okay, yeah. this just isn't worth it. And also ask yourself, what are you fighting for? If it, you know, sometimes th- it's like, well, even if this person worked out, they're looking. In an area I don't really work very well, yeah. you know, so sometimes I, I do get very at peace when I send the last email that just says, hey, I know that you weren't quite ready the last time we talked. I just wanted to let you know I'll be here whenever you're ready. Yeah. I'll just wait to hear from you. I'm just going to. Yes. The end. Yes. And maybe they reach out to you and maybe they don't. I'm going to tell you all. I don't think you lost anything. I'm, no, not at all. I'm going to tell everyone a secret especially our friends who maybe haven't been doing this 10 or more years. You can just stop communicating with them and they'll still come back to you. They do. Because you're busy with other people and yeah. you're like, oh, sometimes I'll be like, shoot, I yep. forgot to follow up with you. Right. And right. here you are. Because if they want to work with you, they'll find you. They'll come. They're just going to come. They're going to, I'm not mm-hmm. saying you should ignore people, but right. it, it's going to be when you're new and you don't have a lot going on, you over follow up just because you're trying to fill time. But I'm just telling you, sometimes it just takes time for them too to much. get there. Yeah. Like you don't need to. So, I mean, it's a big decision. Look, on a client who's buying in six months or longer, more once a week is too many follow-ups. Too many. Too, way too much. Once every other week is probably sufficient. Once a month may do, depending on their situation. Mm-hmm. Now, you could have a follow-up in the way of you set them up on an MLS search and they're mm-hmm. seeing your face every day, but you're not calling them on the phone. Right. Okay. Right. Are you ready for a toast? Yes. Oh my gosh. We're go- okay, guys. There were so many questions that we will return to them. <laughs> and we're also going to take a few and just fully do an episode because there were some. Yeah, some of these questions we needed some, to dedicate a whole episode some deep to. Deep dives needed. So if your question did not get answered today, don't fret. It will get answered. Great. Okay. Today's toast is from Melissa Strudgeon. Strudgeon? Sure. 
She wants to toast to Nicolette Lisa, a fellow agent in Savannah, Georgia. Okay. I love Savannah. Yeah. I want to go back. Uh, she has been singing your praises since the day I met her, and I truly don't believe it was a setup when I got in her car and your podcast was blaring over the speakers. Oh, my gosh. I finally decided to take the time to listen, and now I'm hooked. As a fairly new realtor myself, I can't get enough of all the valuable information you so openly share, and my only complaint... I procrastinated just long enough to no. miss signing up. Oh, for Agent Systems. Oh, no worries, friends. It'll be back. It is coming back. Now, I don't know what date does this air. This is a... Uh, this is going to air on October 11th. I just had the doors open. But if you send me an email, I might be able to sneak you in. Because we start <laughs> We start today. Right. Like the class part starts on October 11th. Okay. Okay. Either way, hopefully, hopefully um, Melissa will get in. Uh, which Nicolette has already taken twice. Nicolette, Whoa. love the class. I'll definitely be in the next time around. Thank you so much, Nicolette, for choosing community over competition and sharing sweet. this amazing, informative, and fun podcast with me. That's wonderful. Hashtag hustle humbly forever fan. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh my God. Cheers to Nicolette and Melissa. Y'all are adorable and we mm -hmm. need to come see you in Savannah. Yes. Okay. Well, goodbye, friends. Um, keep sending those questions and we'll keep trying to answer them. Perfect. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. Let us know who we should toast to for the next episode. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hustle Humbly Podcast. If you have an episode topic or question, please email us at hustlehumblypodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. See you next week. Bye. This is the good life. Are we recording too. here? Or are you still listening? I'm good. Oh, I think I she's got it, Jen. Okay. okay. Oh, we talked about the color. And someone even emailed, like, or messaged a color recommendation. Yes, we got some colors. So yes. helpful, all right? Um, okay. Have you added honey in this? No, I didn't put anything in it. Oh. So I didn't know if you wanted honey or if sure. you wanted to taste it or you needed something different. <clears throat> Um, oh, Jay, you're recording. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless. Okay, well, that's good to know. I think I'm supposed to turn my chair a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to turn mine, too. That's where you get the funny stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, I record uh, it all. Let me break out my good material. <laughs> Hold <Yeah>. on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been saving up. i got to get the rest of these questions. Oh, I have never. Happy dog. You're so sweet, Jay. You're so sweet. Nikki Beeson had her ridge back in the office yesterday, oh. and I just loved all of the room. Oh my god! Really how, made me two, miss a two, ridge back. Old? She has two ridge backs. This one's two, almost two. Hey babe, do you want to put a screen on this window for me? I think it's by the, the trash can, or it used to be. Yeah, it used to be. Maybe. Oh, never mind. Mm. Delicious. Del Del Delicio show. That's vanilla bean macaron. Oh. <laughs> some fancy. Very good. Some fancy. It kind of reminds me of the lemon, though. It's got sweetness, but there's. This the has lemon. a little bit of caffeine in it. Good. Great. Hope, hope you're into that. Okay. I'm, I'm working through the questions. <sighs> Oh, this one's good. There's a lot of them. So we're going to do it next week. We'll do closing delays for sure. I think so, don't you think? That'd be a good one. Okay. Anything else you see that would make a good episode? For sale by owner questions seem to be kind of... <laughs> and it's okay. I don't have the answers either. Like we could just talk about... It's just, it is You know what I'm being more mindful of, though? What? I have so many clients that listen to the podcast. So you don't want them Just to... making sure that it's, you know, the market isn't just realtors that we're talking to. Okay. What would you say to a for sale by owner? Maybe just think about it like that. Yeah. So closing delays and for sale by owners. Maybe so. Maybe as we go through these... We could save the for sale by owner questions for the for sale by owner episode. Uh-huh.
And maybe if we get to another one, then you're like, whoa, that is just too in depth. Yeah. <laughs> what? This one. They're just sometimes they're. F- I just love to. I'm gonna. They're funnier if I read them to you. <clears throat> I just love to hear the way people ask these questions. <laughs> He's just funny. That's all. <laughs> just really funny. <clears throat> <laughs> I want to know. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Hold your horses. Hers is like a full story. <laughs> so a lot of them are like, that's what I'm saying, in the email form. They're like, they're oh, like, no, 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 no. let me tell you all the things. I'm going to tell you all about it. turn off this volume before that's a problem. Okay. So they're going to build a four bedroom, three bath house on their property. I think just right at 2,000 square feet. That's what he's telling me on the phone just now. It's 1990. I'm like, I'm going to need you to get that to 2,000. Yeah. I'm like, just push out just a little something on a wall. He's like, okay, I can do it. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, for your future. I'm helping you with your future. I told you I had my dad send a dumpster over there. Oh, so I'm yeah. like, I don't. Right. Like, what's the. Yeah, what can I do? Yeah. Sorry, your house is destroyed. Right. Here's a dumpster. He was like, actually, I think she said, thank you so much. Everyone's like, how can we help? What can we do? She's like, you're the only person that sent like an actual. I'm trying to be more mindful of like not asking people like what can I do, it's but just not being helpful. like I'm bringing food mm-hmm. or I'm sending the cleaning lady, or right? Like, like just we're gonna have to just figure do it. Out. it. Just like, do what it. What is the thing that will actually be helpful? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just thought that was fine. Like, well, I, it took me a minute, but yeah, it's hard to be it's hard to be um, you know thoughtful, right? Mm-hmm. It's just easier to be like, oh, I'll help. Just t- I mean, I've done it plenty of times. Tell right. me what you need, or I'm here. Right. Like, Oh, this is a great question. Mm. Oh, wow. But toughy. We got to start soon. Okay. Fine. I'll just stop here and then we'll just have to carry on next time. Because there's more. Lots more. Okay. It's fine. We can stop here. See how it goes. It should be more than enough information. Okay. Let me print it. I'm hungry. What? Are, oh, you're going to have Yeah, that's weird, huh? That you're leaving me for yeah. lunch? Yeah, rude. So weird. Tell your dad I said happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to print these. <coughs> All right. He said that's recording too? Yep. Great. Oh my God, it's like three pages already. Print. Okay, that'll help. That. There you go. Mm hmm. Do you, you like the flavor of the tea? Mm hmm. It's delicious. Mm hmm. Do it. All right. Oh, I don't even know what number this is. Did you? No. That's okay. I can find it really very quickly. No worries. Here it is. 